10.1 is there for um, is just where we've been up to in the last months. Obviously, with the council that Thomas mentioned a while ago, there's been a, quite a bit of rain around the areas, made it a bit difficult to get on some of our local roads. And uh, but hopefully, we're having a little run at the moment. Um, although I do see it's uh, forecast to rain again this weekend. So, so I've got one eye on that. I've got one eye on the dam, which sits underneath my. Uh, the uh, window where I'm sitting at the moment, uh, which is at 91 per cent this morning, or a bit over 91 per cent, but um, their goal is to have it at 100 per cent by early October, which is what they're mandated to do by Parliament. So uh, we'll see how that pans out. It'd be nice if they got to exactly 100 per cent and it didn't spill. Well, even if it does spill, it spills very in a minor way. So happy to take questions, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I'll just get a mover in a second. Moved by Council Wales, seconded by Council Thomas. Any comments or questions there, Councils? I have comments. Uh, Council, Council Thomas, thank you. Thanks, Director Carmichael, for your update. Uh, receiving really positive uh, reports with the Mawala Cora pathway. I just have a, a few questions I need to go through with this um, particular item. Uh, question one. With the original scope for that project, there is not a proposed alternative route going through the Wagon Wheel Reserve? Depends where the Wagon Wheel Reserve is. Haven't heard of that one, but where? Can you enlighten me where the Wagon Wheel Reserve is? <laughs> I suppose I can't. So it's, it's the whaler side of um, the offtake for the West Corrigan, I suppose you would say, mm. the western side yeah. of Corrigan. About 10 kilometres out. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Gail. Um, yeah, no, I've just had a phone call and apparently it was a pending a decision within council that potentially that the that they might have been deviating off track and going through this particular reserve, but I just thought they would have been sticking to the original scope of the project. No, it's sticking to the original scope. The only reserve I know we're going through is, I don't know if it has a name, it's down a bit further where there are a number. I don't know whether it's the same one you're talking about. There's access into the river and there's a number of houses along there on the right-hand side as you're going down. We we did run into a snag with, um, I presume it was Department of Lands, whoever controls that land, virtually said we weren't allowed in there. But I think we've now come to an agreement with them. So that, but that was always going to be where the track went. And my understanding, we're on track, so to speak, to uh, put that bit in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's only yeah. bit I'm aware of. And that's probably particularly where we're talking about because there yeah. is a group of houses and that's one of those residents who has rang um, asking the question. So we yeah. probably are on the same page with that one. Yeah, we did We did leave a piece out there across the frontage until we resolved the issues, but that's all mm -hmm. been resolved now. Yeah, okay. So clarification is actually going down into that reserve and then coming yeah. back out towards the road. Yep. Okay, I can give them a buzz on that. The other point of call, not that I don't have a clear understanding on how this works, but with the quarries, how do you estimate when you're talking about um, bringing more rock to the surface and doing your um, potential blast to do that? How do you estimate how much to how much you know you're talking twenty thousand, twenty thousand, and also uh, is that all you consumed within our own council area, or has there ever been opportunity to on sell that to a neighbouring council or to the private sector? No, it's for our own use. Mm -hmm. No worries. Yeah. And now I'm going to move on to roads, which is always a fantastic topic to get on to. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you would have to actually say the most limiting factor to our road maintenance is funds. True. True. So a bit like probably my fellow councillors, we do travel. We, we all move across this wonderful state called New South Wales. So, I mean, do we have to start looking at strategies? Because from your notes here, I can see that our next funding round won't be for February 2022 and I'm very conscious that as we mentioned with all this glorious rain we've had especially some of our main arterial roads they will need that possible extra grade we're going to have that uh, increased burden of traffic because we're going to have this wonderful season so I'm just thinking along the lines of how do we actually lobby for more funds you know should we be doing more advocacy work through Ramjo, through country mayors, through New South Wales local government, you know, to our local members, to our roads minister, to the Commonwealth? You know, 
we're not going to be the only local government area who is going to have these issues. You know, it doesn't stop at our boundary, but roads are an important, um, you know, framework, foundational framework. So what are your suggestions? Or really open, quite open to up to the floor, but we need to have increased funding to actually get our roads back to where they should be because of the increased transport that's going to be happening in the next six months and beyond. Thank you. The only way you'll become sustainable is to bring the majority of money through your rate income. And unfortunately, this council in the past has had a policy to keep rates at a minimum. And I can understand that. Um, I can understand why that was done, but eventually it comes back and bites you. And what we're seeing at the moment is we just do not have the rate base to sustain the infrastructure that we've inherited. And maybe um, when amalgamations were bounced around the magical number for a rural council and population wise to be sustained was around 20,000 people. We have about 13,000. So probably if we had it gone with Lockhart uh, or if Lockhart had come with us or one or the other, uh, we may have had some, but again, I don't know what their rate base was. I don't think it was all that high. So really I, I'm, what I'm saying to you is I don't believe we can keep relying on grant money to keep our roads in the condition they need to be. We need to have a sustainable base going forward that will support a workforce and will support the road network and will support the rural people that have got to get produce from A to B. And years ago, produce went from A to B in the middle of summer when it was nice and dry. These days we store it on the farm and we say, oh, it's raining today. Let's take it to, let's send it all off to Melbourne or Sydney and we take it out when the roads are in their worst possible condition. So there's an education program, there's all sorts of things, but the main thing you really got to do is get your rate base to where it should be to become sustainable. So my next question to you, how far away are we to achieve that then? If we're thinking we've got a budget for this delivery period of 5.5, correct me if I'm wrong, how far away is that going to do 60% of our roads? Is that going to do 80% of our roads to keep them in a very usable state? You currently need $12 million a year to maintain your road and transport infrastructure network, which is coming up in that asset management stuff that we're working through. So at the moment, we're spending around 8 million. Um, this year, we will probably have enough, I think, to get through. At the moment, we haven't. Um, finance and myself are working through some figures at the moment. We should have some figures back in the next, uh, for the next meeting, hopefully, which will give us a base, but um, yeah, until you get that, and we're probably two years away from getting uh, an application in, there's no guarantee you're going to get a, a rate variation, but that's what it needs to get it up. Um, so until that happens, unfortunately, we're just going to have to scratch around and try and hold things together. And what I'm seeing at the moment, um, the Fed way, for instance, even going from uh, from Kiowa to Urana is falling apart at a rate of knots at the moment. Um, going to require a lot of money, which we don't have at the moment. So in answer to your question, I can't really say, but as I said to Adrian the other day, if we get a rate variation, it'll all come in and by then I'll have moved on and the next engineer may have some money to pull the whole network back together again, but it's it's in and dire straits at the moment. Question, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Councillor Longmire. Yeah, if I may, uh, to Mr. Carmichael, in regard to the quarterly meeting of the uh, Road Advisory Committee, is there one forthcoming, Mr. Carmichael? I would hope so, yes. We, we need to keep progressing that uh, material. We've uh, got it out. The leadership group, it'll come back to Manic, some of that documentation I presented the other day, so we should have that, and then we can move forward with some of the road hierarchy material and get into some of the nitty-gritty stuff, which will be good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Carmichael, I was just wondering, listening to your comments, and, and I understand the frustration you must be under, um, you know, with the lack of funding to, to carry out a lot of that works. Um, and then, of course, of course, on the side of the councillor, I'm hearing um, a lot of disappointment in the, in the, in the bush. Um, I'm saying more sort of around um, the middle areas of the Shire where they believe there's nothing done. And so I can see 
there's a there's a gap from where we're at and a gap where a lot of the farmers are at with their roads in that that educational thing that you've spoken about today i think would be really worthwhile to have maybe some meetings out in some of these country areas well before harvest so that they, we can put a priority on on roads like obviously we haven't got the money to do all their roads but we can have the conversation so they know where we're at we know we understand where they're coming from but at the moment it just seems to be that we're not doing a thing we're, we're, we're absolutely um not helping them with the roads at all the roads are in a hell of a mess but i, I just think they need to know where where we are at uh, what we're trying to do and i think with some of their advice or their their the roads that they're going to be relying on for harvest if we could talk about that to them i think it'd be very valuable for the council if not our council but the council going forward so that we can put that plan in place uh a little bit more together than um then us councillors just coming together in, in, in this forum. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I don't have any problem. Unfortunately, they keep moving the goalposts with your election, so that's made it difficult. Um, if we had a normal election in September, we, we probably could have done that. I think we're going to run out of time to do that in a meaningful way. But certainly part of the special rate variation requires us to do an extensive consultation with, the, with all people within the, the council area and that's that's certainly on our radar and uh, a lot of the material's been written. It's just a matter of getting it back to council and getting the okay to go forward with it. So um, we would, I would hope I'd have some reports back to the next meeting, which after that we're going to go into a lockdown period. So, yeah, get that and get out there. I'm happy to get out and start talking. I know we did a little bit of that when we did the... Um, Last round we did for, what were we talking about then? Oh, the rate harmonisation and the uh, long-term financial, the budget for this year, which we sort of touched on where we were heading with it all. Um, so we just need to keep following that up. Definitely. And I think while we're in this in this frustration of um, funding, um, you know, a lot of people don't understand that a lot of the, the funding we got for, the, for this council wasn't for roads. It was specific projects, and, and none of those projects were road funding. Um, and, and, look, I take my hat off to you for the work you have done. And, um, but I just think that lack of communication, if we can work with, um, work with them and just, um, you know, go through the problem together, uh, they'll, there'll be a lot more understanding on where we're at. And um, but it was very... Um, Pleasing to hear Lee Ashford's comments at last council meeting in relation to going forward with these rural roads because um, they, they're a real problem at the moment. Of course, the seasons and the heavy traffic and the great harvest don't help them either, Councillor Thomas. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks very much. And it is pleasing to see that the uh, quarry's up and going and a bit of um, product being um, crushed there. So, um, yeah, at least we'll have some resources to do that with. Any further comments there, Councillor? Yes, please. Councillor Kendi. Just a question, Steve. Um, as we're talking about the, the Cairo Moala cycle, just wondering what's going on down the Moala end where it's all been dug out and it's been fenced off for the last five and six weeks. I bet a fair few people ask me when is, is the gravel going to go in and you know, the graders and the rollers were there and they've been taken away and now there's excavator back there again this morning. Just, um, can you just please just give a little bit of a feedback on that, please, Steve? Yeah, I think it's just been the, the condition just been so wet there that we've, we've had to park gear everywhere unfortunately just because it's you know start putting that sort of gear on s small areas it just uh, works it up and um, doesn't give us the required gee, hopefully we can get a break and like i said it's supposed to rain again this with this weekend so we can get that knocked over this week it'll be good so if there's any problem, i'll get in touch with you but um that's that's my understanding of where they're at at the moment so Thanks, thanks for that. And, and a brighter note, I did get a phone call from uh, an elderly lady who lives down a down a um, Merton Road on a farm, congratulating the Shire on patching your road, Steve, and that was well done. So thanks for that. Yep. Once we once we got the right road between us, we were right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further comments, here, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against Carrie. Item 10.2 is just a report on the Capital Works Program. I'll get into the habit of moving my own screen instead of moving the one that Rochelle's got open there in a minute. 
again, just poor notation and uh, as we've said at the end there, some of the capital works hasn't come into the uh, financial reporting system yet, so that will be updated in the next month or two and uh, go forward from there. Again, Thank you. Notation and questions. Someone like to move those, please, that report. Moved by Councillor Kennedy, seconded by Councillor Wales, and questioned Councillor Thomas. I do. Now, Steve, this is going to be very much a question without notice, and I'm really happy for you to, to get back to us, and I really would need it to get it into your report. I'm not really sure if it fits into this particular section, but it's to do with the changes in our waste management facilities and the opening hours. Now, I'm going to do a little bit digression, but you'll have to work with me, everybody. I find it really interesting underneath our waste management strategy consultation feedback, which happened last year in 2020, May 2020, it, it came out on the 15th. And the community's top five priorities for our waste management was curbside collection, collect all three curbside bins weekly, hard rubbish, introduce curbside and hard rubbish collection. Number four, curbside service, extend curbside service to rural villages plus northern towns. And number five, landfill extend opening hours making opening hours more accessible so here it comes 12 months later changes in opening waste facilities for federation council quote that council has made the decision to reduce the opening hours at the kyra howlong and mawala facilities by removing sunday opening hours i have received feedback that doesn't sit easy with our community in the services being removed and particularly the days that council has chosen. You know, one of the quotes out of this particular media recent is that council has made the decision to reduce the opening hours. Well, I actually don't remember this being on our business papers, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there opportunity to work with our community to, um, to, to revitalize what days they are actually going to open within each one of those communities? Thank you. Council can fund Sunday opening. I'm quite happy to do that. So you tell me how you want to fund it and we'll go forward because everybody that works on Sunday gets paid double time. So if they work Saturday, Sunday, they're getting a week's wage for working two days. Because I know in particular from attending the Oakland Town Improvement Committee, they were um, concerned about the day and then obviously you would have received a letter from the Mawala Progress Association. They were concerned about Saturdays as well. So I think... And then I, some of us would have received a letter from a How Long resident as well. So maybe we need to look at that that weekend service and when that weekend service might fit best for a community. Just was really wanting to provide feedback. Thank you. Our, our figures are also interesting. We're averaging four people an hour through our tips for weekend. So that's one every 15 minutes. So when people say that they only go to the tip of the weekend, I just find that a little bit weird. The figures are just not stacking up from our side. Um, so based on that, that was, and we have got it, we just haven't got the money. Now that the facility has been run the way it should be, in the past, I think you will find the facility was not been run quite according to the way it should have been. And that's probably why it was open longer hours. Now that we have the operation back within the requirements of the EPA, um, we need to keep it under control and the cost overruns there are astronomical. So just another point of comment, is there opportunity to have public access to skip bins if the if their local tips aren't opened? I know that how long did have a couple sitting outside their entranceway at one stage? That was cardboard. The biggest problem we're having with skip bins and we've used them up north is they get abused and we've had to stop using them. We had to take them out of Oaklands. We had to take them, shut them down in Urana because they just got abused. I mean, if we look at uh, tip fees at Urana last year were $800. So if we're going to keep the facility open, and I think you probably find that the general manager contributed half of that because he... <laughs> Did he pay? In his good corporate uh, way, he goes out to and uses the tip there. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, when you put skip bins in, people um, tend to use them and don't go to tips and whatever else. I've seen people using the ones at Daysdale on their way when you're going up to your owner, and some of the people I know come from Corowa um, are just going up there, dropping their rubbish off. and So, yeah, it's, look, I understand people's frustrations with it. 
but again, it gets back if council wants to spend a huge amount of money to keep them open, that's fine. Um, down the track, I think we'll have to look, well, certainly in the next five years, you've got to look, and that's part of the strategy that we're about to get, hopefully get back to council, get the committee back functioning again. It's been in limbo a little bit lately, but get it going again and um, come back to council with some recommendations on where we go in the, not in the long term so much, but even in the short term, we need to look at that. We've got obviously got problems with the coral tip where we have a, a neighbour which we're working with at the moment to work through some issues there. Um, how long has got time? I mean, Mulwala is not even owned by council. We actually pay a lease to ADI, which is the Australian Defence Industries, to have that facility there. And that's tied with the lease for TELUS down there at the moment. So they've only got to leave and somebody else comes in or they sell that facility and we, we haven't even got a facility in Mulwala. So there's a whole series of issues need to be worked through. But I'm sure we can as a, as a council work through those issues and go forward. Thanks, Steve. Steve, can I just make a comment on, on, the, on the tip? The main complaint in how long has been the, the allocation to the Saturday morning. The people are involved in uh, either working or a children's sport or whatever. <laughs> but an afternoon shift would be more suitable than the morning one. Yep, take that on board. Uh, we're getting that feedback. Um, everybody wants it in the afternoon, so if I'm going to do that, we've got to man it. So we, what we're trying to do is do one in the morning, one in the afternoon, so we're not employing the moment we've got three or four full-time employees where we want to get that back and get it under control again. So there's a whole series of issues there we've got to go through. And just to support that comment from Steve, we we get the situation with the Sunday being preferable and I think, yeah, like the letter, from, uh, Councillor Thomas, the letter's already come in from my whale up progress about that. And I know I've heard Councillor Longley say it's been a concern over there at how long about losing that Sunday. So uh, I guess with that waste strategy that Steve talked about, we are in that, that middle position with it all. We had to make immediate decisions around funding because otherwise, as we've just talked about with road funding, we we had to, in the last financial year just gone, divert uh, through council, it was through budget reviews, but we had to divert significant funding uh, from our, our general areas where we would have liked to spend more on roads, drainage, into waste management. And that's a result of underspend there for years, like Steve had said, just to keep compliant in some, some way. But the waste strategy is going to look at that. It's got options and and different areas, but again, that's going to come back to how that correlates with our long-term financial plan and how we fund that that service going forward. So it's just that issue about the short-term changes we had to make to to save so much wages going out, especially in the terms of the penalty rates and things for weekends, uh, versus how we still try and provide a service that the public can feel they're able to access it you know, in some way when that suits them. But I appreciate where Steve's at with it because the waste strategy has come to a point and now it needs to be really looked at how we resource that, that strategy. Thank you, uh, Council Whitechurch. Yeah, I just echo those words. I mean, obviously we are getting bashed in the community about the hours and the fact that it was just uh, appeared to be dropped on people that they couldn't access, you know, the tip on Sundays and those sorts of things. Um, yeah, we totally get from our side, Steve, where it's at with the, the wages and whatnot. Um, but you have been hanging our hat on fighting with the neighbour and all this stuff for a long time. Um, you know, we went down the path of leasing the tips out at one stage. Obviously, it ended up in a shamozzle, but, you know, there's a lot of other shires around New South Wales and Australia that have got tips. Um, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but I agree. We've got to be, keep our finger on the pulse with it, and I don't know what the answer is, but, yeah, we are getting bashed out in the community about it. Yeah, no, I take that on board. We're, we're, we're getting bashed in the office with it as well, so... Steve, I think the part of the problem was the comms. It was just dumped on us. There was no notification if we'd have told the story first or put it out at about just before it happened and, and to the community and told the, the reason why, how, you know, the funding process and everything else. Um, I think that would have helped ease the, the pain. Yep. Thank you. Any further comments on the councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Against carry. And thank you, Steve. That concludes your report. It does. Thank probably, you. Probably should have had that break, Steve. In
before it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we'll move on to item number 11. Notice of motion, question without notice. Uh, this one here from Councillor Thomas. The council provide their water licence details to the next council meeting. Um, Councillor Thomas, would you like to comment there? You know, really happy to. Um, this obviously comes off the back of the uh, water New South Wales water strategies that have been currently developed. As you know, we'll be sitting underneath the Murray, Murray one. Uh, there's some linkages within that package. And as you would know, when I gave my detailed report at the June meeting, there was a table and that if you looked at that table, you'd absolutely see where that particular item sat underneath the hierarchy. Uh, so I'm actually thinking along the lines of if council can actually be quite transparent with their water licences moving forward, because with the town water reduction program, which we aside, we still don't have clear understanding from DPI how that's going to look for our LGAs. I had, was very humbled to be able to sit on the last Ramjo water meeting where DPI actually gave a, I wouldn't consider a detailed explanation when they were asked the question. They were more considering how the New South Wales water strategies and their consultation process. They have come back to me and they are quite open to talk to Federation. Now it will be obviously not in the room with us, but on the Zoom meeting, if we had the appetite to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so any further comments there, councillors? A question, Mr Mayor. Does uh, the notice of motion need a seconder? Yes. Yes, it will. So I presume we've got a seconder, Councillor Longmire? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Um, got a seconder. If there's no further questions or comments, we'll put it. All in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Uh, 11.2, notice of motion about, regarding honour boards, councillor group photo and installation of Aboriginal flag in chambers. Uh, that was moved by councillor Thomas. Councillor Thomas, would you like to run down those points? Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, sorry, I'll get a seconder while we're there. Um, councillor Wales, thank you. Uh, I mean, four years on, we've had this gracious period of some extra... 12 months, which has been absolutely brilliant. And just totally aside, but I really just wanted to get the word fabulous in the council minutes before uh, our end of term. So I'm pleased to stay sitting there today. Uh, no, <laughs> in all serious, our honour boards do need updating. Uh, that cannot be debated. Uh, we still don't have a council photo of the fabulous nine in chamber. And I think it's very important that we actually recognise our Indigenous counterparts in both chambers in Urana and Korra. As you know, we live in a world now where we're sitting with Zoom and Google Meets and I've had the pleasure of sitting on many of these meetings and obviously many of these meetings are in other fellow councils' chambers and I did notice that a lot of them do have both flags in chamber. So let's look at this as a move forward. Uh, it also does really support um, my work with the uh, Murray Darling Association, as you would be aware. You know, in April, we supported a motion to go forward to the conference at the Murray Darling Association support the process to promote greater representation of First Nations people in local government. So let's move on from that and uh, get these flags installed in our chambers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. I don't know whether I need, I need a point four there or not, but it says that uh, council photos from Urana and Coron Urana Chambers. Well, if you saw the photo I've got up in the wall in the Urana Chambers, it, it's not good at all. So can we have a fresh start on those, please? <laughs> sure. Uh, okay. Any further comments? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Can I have a comment, please? Sorry. Councillor Longmire. Yeah, yeah. What does Councillor Thomas think about also... Um, the state flag, uh, that's a, uh, the state flag of New South Wales has been in use since 1876 and, and it has the uh, uh, the Union Jack and the New South Wales badge on it. What, what does she think about that? No, really happy. Um, Councillor Longmire, if you would like to add that to the recommendation, I'm no, really happy to support that. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Longmire. Councillor Whitechurch. 
Yeah, Mr. Mayor, what about the Murray River Federation flag? I mean, where are we going to stop? It's not a, it's not a <laughs> carnival. I mean, it's a council chamber. You put a flag up and then you want another flag and another flag. You know, I, that, I, I don't uh, think it's a place to be putting flags up all over the wall. Uh, thank you, uh, Council White Chief. Council Wales, did you have a comment? You just have to ask if Please. he supports adding that state one to that point three because he's uh, the seconder. Who the seconder? Council Wales. Wales. Okay. Yeah. Council Wales, you're on mute there. Sorry. Sorry, yes, um, I agree with the, uh, about the state flag. Thank you. Support that. You support that. So we'll thank just you. get Rochelle to add that wording to point three. New South Wales state. Question, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councillor Beagle. Is there um, indicative uh, costing involved with with that? Is this an expensive exercise, given uh, our financial situation, and is that the, the wisest use of um, council funds? I don't know if the general manager could has any indication of what uh, the council would incur as a result of all this. Thanks, Councillor Meagle. Certainly point one and two, I would have thought, would be par for the course in that, and I understand they're underway. Certainly the photos photos uh, would be what we do all the time, so that would be able to be funded in our civic budget as well as the updates for our honour boards. The flags haven't done any research on that. I know we do get, we do get uh, complimentary flags for certain things from... Uh, both our federal member, more so, as well as the Governor General for, for um, federal flags, our, our national flag as well. So we'll have to just review that. I wouldn't have thought it'd be overly onerous, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to review that <coughs> costing. Can I, can I have a comment too, please, Pat? Yes, uh, certainly, Councillor Kennedy. Well, I was actually with you, Paul, on that comment because I done a bit of research on the Aboriginal flag and it was designed by an Aboriginal gentleman. Then he sold the rights to a clothing company who has the rights to it all now, so I, I, that's why the AFL doesn't use the Aboriginal flag anymore because um, they've got to pay rights to it. So I'm not sure what the cost of it is going to be. I think we need to check that out first before we make a final decision. Yeah, well, so that, um, how about that point three? Maybe, maybe it, it does need a bit more investigation just to look into the cost side of that and um, further report. Further report in the next meeting. Uh, Councillor Thomas, how, how do you feel? Well, it would be interesting to get feedback from our fellow, especially um, fellow Ranjo councils, how they fund it for their chambers, draw yeah. on their experience as well. Yeah, and, and, and I, I suppose more specifically what it actually costs is probably the question being asked today. What is the cost? You know, is it, is it, is it thousands or is it hundreds? You know, is it a thing we have to be concerned about or not? Um, so I suppose what I'm saying is um, maybe go with points one and two and, and um, would you be happy to do a further report on point number three for the next council meeting? Well, I suppose, is it, a, is it a cost factor or is it a respect factor that we're looking at? They might donate it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, well, there's, it's always respect. Um, and there's no doubt we do respect it and we, we respect the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander every time we have a council meeting. Um, so there's no doubt that, that that's already in place. So, but it has been flagged by a couple of councillors today that, that um, you know, what's the cost and, and uh, where's that, have we got it in our budget? And, and I can't sit here and say whether it's going to cost thousands of dollars or a few hundred. Um, so that was the only reason. Any, any other comment? Council Legal. Thank you. I think that we as a council uh, acknowledge uh, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders at the beginning of every council meeting, so I um, find it um, difficult to say that we don't show respect. Uh, whether there is a flag there or not I, is probably only a visual as opposed to a verbal. Uh, whether we need both or or not, uh, let's just have a look at the costings of that first. So it's it's not about the respect, it's only about whether it's the duplication of that respect, whether it be, we need both visual and verbal, that's all. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any further comments, councillors? Yeah. Council Law. Thank you. Um, we do have two flags already in the council, I think. I'm not there at the moment. If um, Miss Appleyard or Councillor Longley would like to race in and have a look at what flags they are, I think it might be the Australian and the New South Wales flag anyway. They crossed up there near the Queen. Pretty bad, none of us know. Well, something we just take for granted. Yes, yeah, so it's not. Gail, we've got the Union Jack and the Australian flag. So that's the standard British Australian heraldry set up. Thank yeah, you. We've, we've got an Australian and a state flag here where we're sitting. Right. Thank you very much. That was all I wanted to know. Good point of clarity there, Councillor Law. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, to move on, it's. Um, I think this will go to a vote because... Um, well, firstly, is, is Councillor Thomas happy with that wording of point three, though, about investigating the cost before you put the vote? Ah, oh, yes, I can see it on screen. Sorry, I, I, we got a glitch? No, no, that council investigate the cost of the installation of the Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander and New South Wales state flags in both the Cora and Urana chambers and a further report to council. Happy. Yeah. Thank you, Council Thomas. That resolves that. Any further comments here, councillors? Was there Councillor Longley? Would you just... Sorry? If not, all in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. And thank you, Councillor Thomas. Notice of motion, Murray, Murray Darling Association, moved by Councillor Thomas and a second of, can I have a second, please? <coughs> Seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Um, I'll just add uh, Councillor right to the Murray Darling Association CEO, Miss Emma Bradbury, thanking her for a contribution, commitment, and creation of key connections over the past seven years. Um, Councillor Thomas, would you like to say a few words? We actually had um, our board meeting yesterday and really well represented by all um, board chairs as well as uh, Miss Bradbury. We thanked her for her time with the MDA. Uh, she has been the cornerstone to many projects and connections over the past seven years. I just thought a formal letter of thanks to come from Federation Council would be wonderful. I'd also like to see this, not that we have it on our business papers, but also replicated for another CEO that has um, that has moved on is um, Miss Bridget Leopold from Ranjo. She has uh, taken up an appointment as the Deputy Interim Inspector General of Water Compliance. So if we could also write a letter to her and thank her for her commitment to Ranjo, that would be great too. Thank you. We, uh, Council Thomas, that's a great idea and um, maybe we could um Put a point to for to cover or or just add in. Would you be happy to just add in to Bridget Leopold as well? To really happy to add Bridget in because her Thank commitment was absolutely brilliant. So Excellent. thank you. Two very capable ladies, unbelievable. Okay, any further com questions or comments, councillors? If not, I will put it all in favour um. against Carrie. Uh, reports from committees. Uh, no, there's no items listed. Reports from delegates. Any verbal reports from delegates? Yes. Councillor. Yeah, yeah, just in regard to, uh, Mr Mayor, in regard to uh, the board meeting of Ellison, Australian Livestock and Sale Yards Association recently, um, it, uh, I've got actually the financial report, which I will drop in, in table at the uh, Civic Centre when I can get a chance, uh, but certainly the COVID, um, it was mentioned earlier about uh, the sale yards in Coro was still operating uh, and it complemented the management of it, which is uh, really uh, certainly worthwhile. Um, we're still getting around those um, 13, 14,000 uh, head every week. Uh, but the um, a lot of uh, sale yard groups, uh, people in Victoria um, are wondering about a COVID policy coming direct from council and perhaps uh, the 
um, next time and very soon. We, perhaps we should have a meeting with uh, the uh, sale yard group and, and see what comes out of that in regard to go, going forward. There's a bit of controversy, especially since the SPC um, position has come forward. Um, so it'll be something that we hope to be aware of uh, through the ELSA group. Um, and the other one is the um, AGM will be on the 27th of this month um, via Zoom and um, the conference has been put back till February next year and hopefully that's a uh, opportunity for a live conference to um, for delegates to attend and that's it thank you thank you Councillor Longmire so so moved by Councillor Longmire oh, seconded any others? so any other delegates I'm um, sorry any uh, yeah, um, yeah any other delegates reports I'm sorry Councillor let's cut you off uh, no. Councillor Thomas can I give an update from the MDA board meeting yeah. yesterday uh we actually had we we're really fortunate to key up a um, delivery message live from um, minister pavey which was really uh really good to have her um obviously not in the room with us but to have her and take questions from the floor which was absolutely brilliant so some of the key elements that she spoke about was water infrastructure and connectivity and a couple of really things that highlighted was she talked about the town water security programs and the water projects moving right out they've projected forward to 2028 and she's talked about um, that superseding and secure water program for our for our towns and apparently maybe one of our directors could correct me if i'm wrong but the way i interpret what she was saying is that they these water infrastructure programs will be co-funded by local government and they're really going to focus on the local government um, requirements and needs for their town water supplies. So I thought that was quite exciting. And the other point of call is that she spoke about the reconnecting river country, Kuyum to Yarrawonga. Now, I did note that we did receive some information from Director, Director Appleyard earlier on in July, uh, sorry, in August, uh, in regards to this reconnecting river country program launch. Look, we really probably need to watch this space because once again, they're um, bringing in this new program, which will be a, a different program and delivering different outcomes from the previous program called Constraints Measures Program. Um, once again, I would like to think that uh, Water New South Wales and the Department of Planning, along with DPI, aren't muddling the rules again so I'd be very happy to keep an eye on this and report back that suited. Thank you. Thank you, Council Thomas. Uh, Councils, any other verbal delegates reports? I see you. I can see you thinking there, Councillor at Law. Sorry, you're on mute. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got nothing to report this month. I've been keeping myself quiet and at home. Okay, very good. So therefore, um, will Councillor Longmire, are you happy to move those delegates' reports? Yes, yeah, I move. And seconded by Councillor Law? All in favour? Aye. Against carried. Thank you. Um, we've got um, correspondence requiring council action for information. Um, so 14.1 Federation Zone Service Liaison Committee draft minutes. Uh, and then there's a recommendation uh, there that council note the draft minutes from the Federation Zone Service Liaison Committee. And okay. the general manager would like to make a comment on that. I see. Yeah, yeah, can I have a mover, please? A move by Council Wales, seconded by Council Law. Thank you. Yeah, just quickly uh, attend to that one in the absence of Steve, our director, Carmichael, who's on leave at that stage. But certainly it's always a good meeting for himself or the mayor to be available and attend across ourselves and, and Berrigan as well. Uh, one comment was made about congratulating our council, especially our finance manager, Shane Norman, on the work Shane uh, does through council, but to manage the funds for the RFS program. So that was well noted and well received by myself, certainly at the meeting, to to get that endorsement of the work Shane does. And also seeking some minor carry forward funding to do some uh, internal renovations out there at the Cora RFS site, which also connected as the operations centre to, I guess, more cater for COVID requirements these days. So we're hopeful that can go forward. There's some other comments on the 
a situation to develop the Kareen fire shed and, and where that was up to, uh, and a couple of other matters around, especially from Berrigan Council, about the issue of transferring council statewide transferring fleet onto council's asset base and the information that would have to come forward to support that and that's been going around for quite a while but certainly it's been raised not as a local issue but as a statewide issue because uh, the auditor has recommended the, the statewide auditor has recommended that the those uh, fleet be brought to account within council's plant system and that's going to create a whole heap of uh, issues in itself but operationally very pleased with our our work across those areas Thank you, Mr. General Manager. I, I was interested to see there's no service plan for the old Uranus ISA when the merger came in. The service plan was still there in the Korosai, but they haven't actually adopted anything for this end of the council? So fleet service plan, or you meant a service level agreement? Uh, oh, it would be service level agreement. Oh, right. Which was in the correspondence. So I just thought maybe that's concern in, in so much as if they don't have that I thought it was service plan. Um, I said they're trying to get get it through, but I just wonder where it leaves the fleet up, up this end or, or the, the services. Okay, any further comments here, councillors, on that one? Nothing? Uh, the Murray River... Uh, oh, I've got to put that one. Oh, but, sorry, I've got another rec that recommendation needs to be moved. Oh, I've got a Wales and Law, just need to put... Wales and Law, yeah. all in favour? Right. Against carried, thank you. The 14.2 is the Murray River Council. Um, so that was the Murray River Council seeking council support from a Murray Border Region Government Advocacy Initiative. The initiative to save our regional economy and to encourage state governments to adopt a better process for dealing with COVID-19 outbreaks and to deliver both health and ec economic outcomes. And a copy uh, of the emails included in the agenda um, contact with council to advise council are not in a position to contribute financially revealed that council is still willing to have partners with Incoin. Would someone like to move that recommendation, please? Moved by Councillor Thomas and seconded by Councillor Kennedy. Uh, comment, Councillor Thomas. Um, I've actually got the letter opened and I would like to think everyone's had a, a good read of what the uh, Murray River Council are trying to achieve I just wanted some clarity uh, from our general manager. Have you had a chance to touch base with them over the phone to actually talk, you know, work your way through what they're trying to achieve here? I actually would have thought that we already contribute funds to the Murray River uh, Tourism Board and that they would be advocating on behalf of those members already really happy with the recommendation but just quite unsure about a bit of clarity with what they're actually hoping to achieve. Thank you. Sure, yeah, I, I can partly say that that's happened. I rang John Harvey, who wrote the letter uh, on behalf of the council and said that I couldn't see how council would be able to support uh, the $100,000 that they were putting forward uh, as far as that advocacy initiative, because that was part of the email. Uh, the letters come through from the mayor, uh, Chris Bilkey, but John's comments were that in-kind support's just as valuable. Uh, so we didn't make any commitment financially, as uh, but certainly if we wrapped up all the other advocacy efforts we're involved with, with yeah, Murray Tourism leading the way naturally, and, and Ramjo, some really strong initiatives from Wentworth, Mildura, right back through to Albury, Wodonga, uh, which our manager of comms was heavily involved with too, to pull all that joint advocacy together for the mayors to speak as one in the last, well, you lose track of how many border closures, but so yeah, we think that's that's really positive. The one comment I did hear from a recent uh, another CEO was that we have to be very careful also that we it's a positive situation where we live and work and we're obviously challenged at the moment but we didn't want it to be a negative, a too negatively uh, aimed campaign because you know, it's a fantastic place to move, live and work, albeit at the moment we're challenged with border closures. So yeah, that's sort of where we'll follow up a bit more. Um, from that, and that's certainly where the recommendation takes us if it's a pass. Any further comments there, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. And 14.3, uh, City of Sydney Infrastructure Contribution Reform. Um, 
no doubt your councils have read that, so I won't go through it. But anyway, the recommendation that council note the letter from City of Sydney Council in regards to Environmental Planning Assessment Amendment, uh, Infrastructure Contributions Bill, and number two, the council not support the request in the letter at this time. And if the bill is passed and made into a draft set, a report would be presented to council at the time when more operational details are known for consideration of submission. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Council Law, seconded by Councillor Whitechurch. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. There'd be no confidential items, so I now declare the meeting closed. Thank you, councillors and staff.